Now, my father was a John. minister. I, my father was a minister, and some of you know the implications of that. <laughs> so, I'm setting the timer. <laughs> Even though it's all timed out here too, as well. Uh, this is a question that uh, we've addressed since a number of years ago, about 20 years old ago, almost exactly today, I think it was, that I got a call from Jerry Edelman and said. A mutual friend, Jim Fox, has said that you guys might have skills that we would be interested in developing. And in the course of what we produced, uh, over the course of three years, we produced a project that really looked at uh, how to express the, the, the importance of the canal through the growth of Chicago. Over the years, I will say, I've had the great opportunity in both informal and formal settings to say, um, the, the reason do you know why we live where we do? And most people will say, well, sure, because of Lake Michigan. And we're all immigrants. You may have, I think that sky slide skip, but we're all immigrants. We've all immigrated some, from someplace. Why do we live here? And it was, most people would just say Lake Michigan or the industry or the rails or something. And I could easily say, no, the reason we live here is because of a man-made body of water. Virtually every other big city in the world is there because of a natural body of water. We're here, and indeed, we're here today because of a man-made body of water, which made this extraordinary economic thing possible. So the group, artists of Chicago Public Art Group were asked to take on the problem, or the solution as it were, of illustrating the value of a man-made body of water that virtually no one had heard of. And still, yet, yeah, not a whole lot of people in the city know it, but gradually more and more do. So we were able to do a project not only with city residents, but also with suburban residents, and in fact, we were in smaller towns out through Shaman and out as far as LaSalle, Peru. I don't know if any of you ever worked on any component of this piece or not. I don't see anybody saying that. But we had artists who were out working with you. I have one of the images that wasn't digitized yet was an image of people casting fish into clay. And the fish were laying on the table. And the molds were on the table. And they were pressing clay into it. And the fish came out of the canal. And of course, you didn't want to think about that too long. But that was, in fact, the way in which some of the very real things that showed up on here. So the canal has four benches. Uh, this particular one is about the Silurian seabed and the physical digging of it. You saw a moment ago somebody drawing or making little clay models of the figures. You see those here. But it also explores the archaeological sort of much more historic uh, presence of uh, the, the great Silurian seabed that, that this resulted in a very low watershed that flowed both directions and made this possible. This is handmade ceramic and glass tile on a, a custom-made concrete form. The uh, references were here to fossils and all sorts of things that in fact are under the earth as we look down into the limestone in various forms. But the, uh, the evidence was that people really did not know this history at all and that they did not know what to relate to. In our case, it resulted in the growth of the city. So there was four steps. This was the very early look of where you could see the shape of the river there. The later two over there are the growth of the city uh, to much greater positions of, uh, of importance economically. This is the so-called water bench. The water bench has in it the sense of the flowing of the water as well as the canal boats and barges themselves. And it has some of those fish down here at the bottom, which you see that were caught canal, and a number of other really just beautiful elements that were created by artists working uh, together, and in many cases with community members who create the work. There was a whole lot of tile work that went into this, and it is still holding up well today, I'm happy to say 20 years later, right in front of Navy Pier, which is of course the real headwater of the canal. Um, so we'll reference to MC Escher. Get, and some leaves that were cast from uh, imprinted and cast in one of the outlying uh, smaller towns that we went to. And then the fourth bench is one which references uh, the industry and the way that industry grew up in the city. And so it's a series of uh, sort of gear and spoke and frame and photographs and that sort of thing. There are a great many images and a great many details in the piece. But it was created because there was a substantial change in the world of art from 50 years ago. 50 years ago, virtually all public art was, well, let's call it statues of men on horseback with swords raised, usually. 
And that's no longer the case. There's an extraordinary range of, of public art that is done today, and it often engages community members in the creative process of deciding what needs to be said, and how it should be said, and how it should be said in this place. We've had the good fortune of working in many places across the Midwest, and this was just part of our function. 